Welcome to Times of Refreshing. Today's topic is a very interesting one. It's captioned, Whose Clock is Ticking? Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. A clock is a mechanical or electrical device used for measuring time. In the natural, the ticking of a clock signifies the passing of time. Society seems to understand the aspect of right timing as it relates to other areas of lives and divorce. But when it comes to marriage, age has become one of the vital determinants of a person's time to be married. Some people even believe that there is a certain age after which it becomes difficult, if not impossible, for a single, especially females, to be married. Research even shows that over the last 30 years, single adults are rapidly being segmented in the society. And sadly, this includes the Christian community as well. Even the dictionary defines spinsterhood and bachelorhood as a phase of life for those who have conventionally grown beyond the age of marriage. This explains why some singles feel pressured to be married at all costs. Pressure can be from family, friends, and even self. The word pressure means weight, body, and anything that forces you to take decisions that you originally would not have taken. Due to pressure, some individuals end up making wrong marital choices that negatively affect them. This ought not to be so. Singles, beware of making marriage decisions in a haste. Decisions made in haste often end up in regret. Please look before you leap. What makes a successful marriage are more spiritual than physical. And these can't be hastily designed. Listen, age is just a number, not a state of the mind. Singles understand very clearly that delay in marriage is not denial. Maybe your younger brother or sister is even married already. Or you have several written down expected timeline to be married and it has not come to pass. That is not to let you know that your future maritally is doomed. There are cases of several individuals whose younger brothers or sisters get married before them. Yet, you must remember that your time with God is unique. Don't be ashamed of feeling complete because you are single. Your glorious marital destiny will become a reality in the name of Jesus Christ. Recently, I watched a video of a couple and the lady just got married at the age of 60 for the first time. A very strong and sound Christian lady at the age of 60. If God can do it for her, then he can do it for you as well. I heard a testimony of another lady who got married for the first time also at the age of 60. God is not a partial God. You will not have to wait for that long. But in case you are already as old as that, don't give up because your case is not closed. Beware of fear and insecurity. Now that you are still single, make the most of this stage of your life so you can experience a blissful marital life. To handle marital pressure, what should I do? Somebody might be asking. Listen to these few tips that I believe will help you a great deal. Number one, set your priorities right. Make God and the interests of his kingdom your priority. Remember that your decision reflects your priority in life. When your priorities are rightly placed, it is difficult to be distracted. What you treasure most is a pointer to your priorities in life. Build a solid relationship with God now that you are still single. Don't place your career, marriage, desires, vocation, or any other thing above God. Give God his rightful place in your life. Make him number one. Join God faithful even now that you are still single. Stop pointing accusing finger at God. 
He is not the reason why you are still single right now. He is actually the solution provider to your situation. Then locate your purpose in life and pursue it. You can still fulfill your purpose on earth even now that you are single. Purpose is that which God has destined for you to become. See, don't allow the desire to be married rob you of your reason for existence. Don't let marriage define you. Ensure you make productive use of your single years by investing into your destiny and that of others. And very importantly, seek to be a blessing to humanity. Remember that you are redeemed to be a blessing to others. God has a rich deposit in you that needs to flow out to others. Embedded in you is the solution that the world awaits to challenging issues that confront her. Don't waste your potentials. Remember in scriptures, Elijah, Elisha, Daniel, Anna, Mary, Martha, Silas, Lydia, Phoebe, among others, were all singles, but they were fervent in spirit and in their own days, they influenced their world positively. Therefore, singles, no matter your age, Stop counting how old you are while you are waiting on God. Go ahead and do what waiters do, and that is serve. Number two, don't underestimate the place of prayer. Listen, you need to pray your way into your marital destiny. Prayer changes things, it changes people, it changes circumstances and situations, and it can change your marital destiny positively. There's nothing too small or too big to pray about. This is one of the things I've come to discover about prayer. And remember, marital pressures can be easily destroyed through prayer and fasting. My husband, God's servant, Bishop David Ripple, has always said, what you don't want, don't watch. You don't want to stay single? You are ready to be married? Don't keep watching. Go on your knees before God in prayer. Prayer is an avenue where man relates to God on any issue of concern. James 5.16 tells us, The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. If there is any hidden reason for the delay you experience in marriage, then prayer is your best option to break in it. God can also reveal secrets to marital experts to you in prayer. For instance, it was through prayer that God revealed the seven secrets to a successful marriage to my husband while we were not married yet. And those are the things that are helping us in our marriage today and many others around the world. So when you commit your ways to God, he brings your desires to pass. But you must be specific in prayer and do it in faith. Therefore, right now, wherever you may be listening, to this broadcast, you are experiencing some pressure concerning marriage. I pray for you in the name of Jesus the Christ. And I decree the pressure to be lifted off your life right now. I decree your breakthrough maritally. That delay in the name of Jesus Christ comes to an end today. Number three, put your emotions under control while you are still waiting. This is very important to overcome marital pressure. You must learn how to put your emotions under control. Emotions are instinctive feelings such as love, hate, fear, anxiety, worries, pride, and the list goes on. Largely, they determine your attitude and how far you go in life. Everyone has emotions, but they are not meant to control you. You are meant to control your emotions. How do I control my emotions, someone might say? One, guard your mind and renew it with God's word. Avoid negative thoughts. Stop wearing a long face because all your mates are married. Remember, no one will want to marry someone carrying a long face. Then beware of anxiety and eagerness. Anxiety is associated with unbelief. Remember, God makes all things beautiful in his own time. Your time 
is coming. And then, of course, learn to forgive. This is very crucial. Unforgiveness in prisons and is a weight. Your forgiving others gives you access to God's forgiveness. So you are doing yourself a lot of good when you forgive others. And of course, refuse to allow others hurt or mistake make you a captive. It's very important also for you to quit being angry. There are some singles, because they are not married on time, they are angry at God. Some are even angry at themselves. Some are angry at their family members, society, or past relationships, or even friends. Remember, if you are angry at God, who will help you? And if you are angry at yourself, how can you love yourself? To love oneself, remember, is the beginning of a lifelong romance. Anger puts you far from God, therefore blocking your access to his blessings, which includes a good marriage. So you must stand up against the temptation of being envious of others whose marital destiny have been established. I pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every emotion that is going around your life and making life difficult for you, putting you under unnecessary pressure, I decree your total liberty now in Jesus' name. And then, of course, number four, beware of defilement. The Bible, God's word, is very clear on this. The marriage bed must be undefiled. Engaging in premarital activities won't compel anyone to marry you. Rather, it can utterly destroy potentially great relationships. Marriage, you must understand, is not a piece of fabric or pair of shoes that you purchase from the market. Don't buy into the lies of the enemy that you have to test the waters before entering into it. It is not true. Singles, learn to keep yourself pure. Watch your appearance also, your courage. Don't appear desperate so you don't get misused. The testimony I shared with you earlier of the 60-year-old lady that got married for the first time, when I saw her picture, she looked less than 40 years old, looking very beautiful, pretty, and young. So don't go around like a grandfather or a grandmother. No one wants to marry an old person. So be attractive. Number five, and finally, be positive. Staying positive about life is one of the best things you can do for yourself, I tell you. Refuse to be depressed. You must reject that suicidal thought. Refuse to be frustrated because of marriage. I don't know who you are right now, but you are there listening to me and you are having that suicidal thought because you are still single. I curse that thought in your life and I decree your total liberty now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No matter your age or past disappointments, ensure that you have a high self-esteem. Stop looking down on yourself. Remember, people see and value you based on your self-worth. Therefore, build your faith and confidence in God Almighty. Remember, God acts on your faith. A weakened faith cannot overcome the pressures of life, particularly marital pressure. So be intentional about being hopeful. This is critical. No matter your age, I'm glad to let you know today that your case is not close. Don't give up because winners never quit and quitters never win. Trust every word that God has spoken to you and refuse other alternatives. Make God your only source. That lady that testified said she has a vision board. And for the first 20 years, she wrote her vision, including that of marriage. And that the first 20 years, everything she wrote came to pass except that of marriage. Then the next 20 years, she wrote it again and put it there. And she refused to give up until God made it happen. She had a very glorious wedding. I saw the picture. So remember, God is on your side and refuse to give up. The first step to a healthy and lasting marital relationship is good friendship. So build healthy friendships with no strings attached. Because if you stay locked up in your house, how will people see you? 
So freely attend Christian gatherings that will enhance your self-worth. Your physical appearance also matters a great deal. Remember, the way you are dressed is the way you will be addressed. So always dress neatly and moderately. Philippians 4.5 tells us, Let your moderation be known unto all men. This is important. And finally, learn to give thanks, for it is the way to attract your desires. You can even write down what you are grateful and thanking God for. This will help you remember how faithful God is to you. In conclusion, and I quote, a wise man once said, the best of God can never be rushed. So even though your clock is ticking, refuse to be pressured into making wrong marital choice. Be the best version of you so you can have God's best for your life. Remember, that you have waited does not make everyone that comes your way good enough for you. Miracles still happen. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for you right now, wherever you may be listening, for supernatural breakthrough maritally for you, whatever your situation might be. Everybody on your path maritally, I command them in Jesus' name to be broken right now. And this year, my God will surprise you. Your testimony, maritally, shall be a glorious one in Jesus' name. As I close, are you born again? Bow your heads right now and pray this prayer with me. Oh God, today I come to you. I'm a sinner. Jesus, save me. From this day forward, I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you pray that prayer, you are now born again. Log on to the website address at the bottom of the screen and fill the form that is there. And then you can send your testimonies through this same medium and connect with the social media handles at the bottom of your screen. And always remember, God is too faithful to fail. See you next time and God bless you. Bye.